to wordsmith writing tutorials. Um, this is not quite a uh, prompt based tutorial, this is a key skill that everyone needs to have. So at some point along your writing, um, so writing career, but it's that development of writing, you will need to really look at your editing and your revising of your work. Um, I've spoken to so many assessors who are so disappointed by a clean copy. When it comes to that exam answer paper, if they turn to the writing page or their writing task and it's perfectly neatly handwritten, no rubbings out, no nothing, it's a bit disappointing. Because yes, it shows you've got an idea that you can get the idea down, but it doesn't show that you're crafting. It doesn't show that you're making choices and changes to improve your work. So it's harder to get the higher grade 789 if you're not showing that you're crafting. If you look at the assessment objectives according to um, the current system, AO5 is your writing, which, is, which should communicate clearly, effectively and imaginatively, selecting and adapting tone, style and register for different forms, purposes and audiences. Organise information and ideas using structural and grammatical features to support coherence and cohesion of texts. Basically, it needs to make sense, it needs to be crafted, and AO6, it's uh, vocab sentence structures and SPAG. So a lot of schools focus on the SPAG, not so much the rest of it. So I'm going to introduce you to a system that helps you to do the whole thing. Okay? Helps you to improve your writing in general. So you need to have one of your writing um, tasks in front of you. I'm picking the 111 task, which was the um, winter sunrise, because I knew it was I knew it was rough. I knew it was bad when I did it. Because what I normally do is write it out in rough, and then do my edits, and then write it into my book and use it on the blog. This occasion, I did no edit at all. So this is raw writing. So without thinking about uh, punctuation without thinking about really the cohesion and the crafting of it so it's just a very basic write. It was too short because I've got three paragraphs and there's no more than two or three sentences per paragraph which is really really short. Standard paragraph should be around about four or five sentences if not longer unless you're trying to do something for a dramatic, dramatic effect you'll get to that at some point. So I'll show you a picture here of my book this is all the editing I've done and it's all colour coded so I can keep track of what I'm doing. I'm going to pick out just the first paragraph of this writing piece. Um, the full thing will be on the blog with all the changes and all my reasoning behind the changes included. So first of all we need to think about how are we going to do this? How are we going to market? Um, so what I would suggest in your exam situation is that you have two colours of pen. Okay, a blue and a black or a blue and a green, or a black and a green, or whatever. So you write your first draft with one colour, so your blue or your black, and then you come back and edit with a different colour. Again, it makes it easier for the assessor to see where you're changing and crafting, and it separates things out. And I would also suggest that you double space when you're writing creatively. That is, write a line, leave a line, write a line, leave a line. So then you've got room to add all your notes and extra bits. So there are four editing symbols that you really should be aware of. First of all is the easiest, strike it through. Okay? If it's wrong, just put one line through it. Don't scribble it out. Do not ever use Tipex Whiteout, any kind of correction fluid. Okay? Do not use it. <laughs> That's the only, only rule I've really got with writing. Correction fluid ruins everything okay i hate to see written work that is covered in correction fluid because you're not showing this development of ideas okay if you just put a neat line through what you don't want read that's fine that means the assessor can still see it and they can see where you changed your mind okay see where you've started from and then we've got two so you're showing development and crafting symbol number two is kind of the undo button Okay, it's how you, if you change your mind, if you cross something out and then you realise you need it, if you just put a line of dots underneath that section, the reader knows, okay, so we've cancelled the, the, the strike through, so we're actually reading this bit. 
okay? So that is where you only strike through. So it can be reusable later. Number three is kind of an insert word here mark. So it's just done a, a V shape, just to say, I want a word or a phrase to fit in this point here. So you're clarifying where you're adding bits. And number four kind of follows on from that, is you use an asterisk, so a little star. If you're moving things around, and if you've got more than one thing to move around, you can number them instead, or, or letters. Either way, you're saying, I want to add this bit of text here in that section there. So it's simple. Simple tools, simple symbols that you can use to indicate your changes. So, <clears throat> I'm going to look at this first, only the first paragraph of this piece, because there's three paragraphs and there's a lot of changes made through the whole thing. And I'll come to that on the blog. So my first paragraph reads, The sky was navy, almost black, fading to a bleached denim near the horizon, where a faded gold glow touched the chimneys of distant houses. A few bulbous cl uh, lilac clouds were amassing in strange shapes and colours, bright silver bottoms, contrasting indigo tops. Tiny crystal speckles swirled by, pausing lightly on rooftops, then dancing away on the next gust. So it's three sentences that are okay, they're interesting. Um, they use colour in the way that the task sets, but they're not fabulous. They need a bit of work. So I use um, one of the acronyms. There are a number of different acronyms you can use. There's RAID and Bubble and Tango and something else. I can't be the almost. There's a number of different acronyms you can use. I use DARES because it seems to make sense in terms of order and what you're doing with them essentially. So we start with the D, which is delete unnecessary words. So that's repetition. If you've made an obvious point, which happens a lot, if you're just kind of flapping about for something to say, your answers tend to be obvious. And then using, getting rid of excessive words, excessive use. Um, I know a lot of writers do it across a book. They'll, ha they'll have their pet word whilst they're writing. And you'll find that one word comes up eight or ten times across a book or more. Um, it's okay across a book, but if it happens in a short piece of writing, that shows that you've got quite limited um, vocabulary and you need to work on that. So for my first deletion, or even thinking about deletion at this point, I've got in that first line, I've got fading and faded in the first sentence, which is really bad vocabulary. It's very bad choices. So I'm going to mark those as needing to be replaced or removed. And then in that second sentence, bulbous lilac clouds. I know the task was to add colour, but lilac clouds, it kind of slows it down. If you're thinking about the pace at which it's read, at which it's understood, it doesn't help anything. So I'm removing lilac because it's not quite there. It's not the word I want, but I'm removing, removing that one and I'll be adding more details to make up for what I'm losing, essentially. After these A's, add more detail. So that's the opportunity. You're deleting bits, so you can add more. So if we go back to um, faded gold. So I need to sort out this faded to fading issue. Faded gold isn't the colour I'm looking for because gold is still quite warm. It needs to be closer to a white of a bleached denim. So I'm leaning towards something like a buttermilk white. Okay, so that's a white with a tinge of yellow. So I'd like that as a better colour for that edge of the sky. And then further down, second uh, sentence, uh, in strange shapes and colours. Okay, <laughs> it's like saying it's blue. It's Again, you're not um, describing the shapes. So it's not just blue. Okay, so clouds massing in strange shapes and colours, I need to replace that with something. So I'm thinking about a shape, a simile, or a metaphor that I can use. So I've got here, um, clouds were massing in bundles like a tight bag of apples hanging in the sky. It's a ridiculous image, but it gives you that image of that kind of bulbous, bulky, rounded shape. But at the end of this sentence, I need to add more detail. This is still going to be only a, about a three or four sentence paragraph, but it's not really set the scene. And I want to say something about winter versus sunrise as this kind of battle of new light against the cold and the dark. So at the end, after the next gust, so it was nightly on rooftops and away on the next gust, 
as the warmth of dawn fought against the chill of the winter night. Yes, setting scene, okay? So we have we have sky, but we have this warm thing trying to fight its way into the cold. So that's adding more detail, adding more interest into this paragraph. And also, that last lit sentence, pausing lightly on rooftops and away into the, into the next gust, on the next gust. Hmm. I think I need to add some movement, something here. So if they're already swirling and pausing and, and going, I think dancing, dancing away on the next gust, Again, it builds a sentence out, it adds more detail to it. It is often quite true that the first sentence you write isn't the best first sentence. Often the, the best opening sentence will be two or three down the line because you've got into the flow of the story. So in this case, I'm going to pick up the clouds first. We know about the sky. The sky is universal. But the clouds are always very different. And I think it's going to be more interesting starting with the clouds. And I'm getting rid of a few. Because I don't want it to be... If it's a big snowstorm, it shouldn't be a few clouds. It should be lots of clouds. And by starting with bulbous clouds, it gives a roundness and a, and a size and a shape to everything. So I've switched this all around to put bulbous clouds first. So you won't have much in the way of exchanging order. It tends to be around the, the top or in the start and at the end of writing where you decide that you need to clarify where you're going, where you're finishing. So it's always trying to find a better opening line or a better flow of what you're talking about. Okay, and then E is exchange. Exchange for a better word. So you're looking for a more interesting word, a better synonym for what you're saying, essentially. So here, in that first sentence, the original first sentence, the sky was navy and was black, and this buttermilk white glow, the buttermilk white touching chimneys of distant houses. If you think about a sunrise, it's not just touching, it's not kind of an edge touching a, a rooftop, it's covering the very edge of that horizon. So I think wrapping is a better word. So we'll change that one. And then that last sentence, tiny crystal speckles hmm you're seeing this at a distance so how big are these speckles going to be you're not going to have to see individual ones really are you you're just going to be able to see one or two little shining glitters so glittering speckles sounds better and once you're happy with that you check your spelling and grammar so hopefully this now reads a little better so Bulbous clouds were massing in bundles, like a tight bag of apples hanging in the sky. They had bright silver lining the bottoms, in contrast to indigo waves across the top. Behind them, the sky was navy, almost black, fading to a bleached enemy near the horizon, where a buttermilk white wrapped the chimneys of distant houses. Glittering spe um, speckles swelled by, pausing over lightly on rooftops, then dancing away on the next gust, as the warmth of dawn fought against the chill of the winter night. Now... That opening paragraph is so much closer to a grade 7 to 9. Extensive and ambitious vocabulary with evidence of conscious crafting of language devices used throughout. So I've crafted, I've added more. Yeah? I've added more of the assonance with bulbous clouds massing in bundles. I've built on that, add more colours, I've clarified my point. Okay? I want you to look at my write-up on the blog and look at your own writing and see where you can add you can delete unnecessary words add more details rearrange the order to make it better and clearer exchange for better words and then check your spag spag is always important but think about the rest as well so your first draft is never your best you need to dare to improve